Good morning, campers, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program version 0.25. We are going right back into the thick of things again. We uh, just took a contract to test this solid rocket booster, so this one should be pretty easy. We're just going to stick a command pod, parachute, and landing legs on it, and go. And of course, just running things nice and fast here, because there's no reason to slow you down watching these boring old flights. And we're, we, I'm just going to go ahead and spoil it, we are not going into orbit today. All suborbital flights for this one. But uh, as you can see, this solid rocket booster, very powerful, going to be very useful to have this under our, uh, under our list of available items later. In fact, we will be using that as soon as next episode. And reaching the top of our parabola here, and going back down. Uh, now you see I did stick landing legs on it, that's not really entirely necessary, but the, if you want to get the entire rocket back in one piece, it really does help. It saves you a bit of money in the long run, and since we didn't go left or right, or uh, we didn't change our trajectory at all, we're going to land right back at the Space Center. In fact, we're going to land next to the Administration Building, so Bob can just get out and go get some snacks. As soon as they bring a ladder, anyway. And there we are, safe as houses. Got lots and lots of funds back for that, so the only funds we really lost from that was the cost of the solid fuel itself. Gonna take another contract here to test a bit of landing gear in a suborbital trajectory. Normally these aren't the best contracts to do because the constraints are pretty difficult, but this one's actually a pretty simple one. So start over with a new rocket. Capsule, parachute, and we're going to do a pretty basic orbiter here. Yeah, that looks a little goofy. Let's try something slightly different. We're going to do a service module, just stick the landing gear bay on the side. Some landing legs so we can touch down with it still attached. A little science, because we might as well at least turn this into a science expedition. Luckily, the landing gear bay is one of those items in the game that doesn't have any physics attached to it, so you can stick it pretty much anywhere on the rocket. It's not going to affect your flight pattern at all. And just some solid rocket boosters ought to do the trick to get us onto that suborbital trajectory. And I'm noticing I didn't put those on quite straight. There, that ought to do it. Let's go ahead and fire this thing. Now, since we've just got a pretty basic rocket here, we're just going to go on a nice high suborbital arc and land near the North Pole. That'll give us a ton of free science and accomplish the parameters of our test mission for the landing gear. So we will need that information if we plan on going and making space planes later. Alright, solid rocket boosters have detached. We are burning for altitude still over 10k now just trying to bring us over towards the North Pole. Now, relative to the surface of the planet we are traveling due north, but of course you saw an or orbital velocity that's actually slightly northeast just from the differences in uh, surface versus orbital relatives. We have an apoapsis up in space now. I'm going to go ahead and ditch the first stage. And just flattening out the orbit now with the uh, upper stage motor. Nice efficient little engine that does the job very nicely of getting us where we want to go. That would be the LV-909. There we are. Now we can just go ahead and conduct our on-orbit operations as we wait for the uh, parameters from the landing gear to come up. Any moment now.
There we are. And test complete, contract fulfilled. Now we are nothing but a science mission. Alright, gonna go ahead and angle for re-entry. We don't want to expose the crew capsule to the rigors of uh, heating effects here. Coming in pretty steep, so that's quite the fireball we're making. And already subsonic as well. Parachute deployed, landing gear out, and you saw the, uh, in addition to the legs extending, the wheel also popped out there. That's, that's just kind of funny. A nice flat bit of ice to land on here. Perfect. Goose the engine to bring us down a little bit slower before the parachute pops, because I'm a little worried about how heavy the stage probably still is. We did not use as much of our fuel as I expected. Grab a quick EVA report on our way down. And touchdown. Nice, easy mission there. Gonna go ahead and grab some science at the North Pole. Kinda wish I'd saved the, uh, the materials lab for the North Pole, but I'm sure we'll come back here eventually. And just pop up into uh, a little bit of a hover there so I can do a flying crew report and get a little more science and knock the rocket over. That's alright, still recoverable. Alright, everyone back home safe and sound. Didn't get many points for being near Kerbin, uh, near the Space Center, because of course we were about as far from the Space Center as you can get and still be in the same hemisphere. Oh, that's not true. I guess you'd just be on the opposite side of the planet from it, and now it'd be in the same hemisphere, wouldn't it? Oh, well, anyway, unlocking bits of the science tree here. And of course, in hard mode, you have to pay for individual parts, which really puts a strain on your budget. Checking out the available contracts now. We do eventually want to go to the moon. That's finally shown up on our list. We also have some uh, a strain of Kerbal that we might be able to go for. A test of radial decouplers. That seems promising. Stack decoupler. Radial engines. Yeah, let's do those. So radial engines are what we're going to test next, but we do have to get into orbit for those, which I completely underestimate how heavy these things are. I normally, when I did use them in sandbox mode, I usually stuck them on a much larger orbiter, the kind you see on, uh, the kind you saw on my previous videos in the Kerbal Cleanup, the big two and a half meter sized orbiters would often have those engines when I had something stowed behind them in the staging. But, uh, so I completely underestimate how hard, how uh, heavy they are, and we've already used up our solid rocket boosters, using up the first stage now. Like I said, spoilers, we are not going to space in this episode, so you're going to see pretty early here that we don't have nearly enough Delta V to make it to orbit. engines do have mass and uh, they do affect your drag, The you want to make sure you put them on symmetrically, so I couldn't just do that bolt one onto the side thing I did for the landing gear. Still desperately trying to get into orbit, but uh, no, I'm afraid we fell short. So now we do just have to try and angle so that we can land safely, not lose all the parts. Unfortunately, this is a very heavy lander, and we didn't make orbit, so we're probably going to come down in the ocean. No reason not to do a little science while we're up here, though. And falling. Forty-three thousand meters. 
35,000 meters, angling for a better descent profile. And there's the heating effects coming now. Quite the fireball over Kerbin's Atlantic Ocean. Kerblantic, I think. Do some science on our descent here. Through the cloud layer. Parachute is partially deployed, just waiting for full deployment now. Hopefully nothing will pop off. There we go. And going for a nice, easy set down in the water. So this, this went pretty well, I think. Spoke too soon. And of course, half the parts disintegrate when we touch the water, because we hit still pretty hard. I'm going to go ahead and send Bob on EVA to grab the science we can from these. And go ahead and bring him home. We will eventually recover the rest of the parts that are out there as well, just to get a little bit of money back for them. And here we are back in the Space Center once again. We are going to have to update this design quite a bit. So we're going to add an upper stage here. Same service module though, and then we're going to add a much more powerful launch stage. Based on one of my early moon rocket designs from when I was first playing the game. And of course I remembered I don't have the aerodynamic maneuvering fins. So we're going to use the the uh, rocket engines that have thrust vectoring, so we have some control in the lower parts of the atmosphere. Of course, some uh, sti some uh, uncontrollable fins for stability purposes. And let's go ahead and... nope, oh wait, I forgot to strut those up, so let's go ahead and uh, add some struts to those before we, before we launch this and have it fall apart on us. Don't want those engines wobbling all over the place. Set our Stability controls and st stability, come on, stability, control. there we go, and launch. As you can see, we've got plenty of power, had to throttle back a little bit since we were uh, accelerating a little bit too hard. Don't want to stress too much in the lower parts of the atmosphere, or you'll just wind up wasting fuel against your uh, aerodynamic drag. powerful launch stage. You'll see this is going to get us a good chunk of the way into orbit. We're actually going to start, start our that We're actually going to start our gravity turn here before we ditch that first stage. Though it didn't get us significantly further than the previous vessel did with uh, with boosters. So we got the upper stage burning now. That's going to get us up to orbital altitude. However, it's not going to get us to orbital velocity. So that's going to be up to the LV-909 in the service module. But as you can see, the first two stages alone got us almost, almost as far as our in original crash site, which you can see marked on the map there as a debris indicator. Alright, so burning for orbit, I'm afraid this is not going to have quite enough delta V to get us into orbit. Not for lack of trying, it's just those engines are so heavy that they put a complete drag on the entire launch profile. Early on in the atmosphere, you're just got so much extra aerodynamic drag that it's slowing you down a bunch in the uh, in the low atmosphere. And then, of course, once you're actually in orbit, that 909 just doesn't have the power to put that much mass into to uh, move that much mass very effectively. Though I think without those engines, that vessel would have made orbit no problem. Anyway, we are coming down. I've Jumped it up to 8x speed, so we're going to descend through the atmosphere nice and quickly here. No reason to see this again since you just did. Same service module and everything. Getting some bucking here as we enter the lower parts of the atmosphere. Re-entry effects. Nice fireball. Going subsonic. Deploy the parachute. Do some science. And back down to 4x speed for the... Woof noise. Woof. Okay. Dropping to a nice gentle landing in the ocean. Hopefully nothing's going to fall apart this time. And of course it all falls apart. But this time there's no science to recover, so we're just going to recover the spacecraft. And that is the end of this episode. More coming later this week. Thank you so much for watching.